Hello, this is Dr. Trevor. Today, let's talk about a few tips for solving the penny on a bowling ball problem. By the end of this, hopefully you'll be able to set up this problem and solve it. Okay, so in this problem, you've got a penny resting on top of a bowling ball. You give that penny a slight bump and it starts to slide. It slides along the surface of the spherical ball, which means that it's moving in a circular path and there's no friction. And we want to know what angle the penny leaves the surface. So down here is the angle theta that we want to look at. And that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, this is a classic problem. So I'm not going to give you a full solution for it. But I will give you a few hints and tips though. Okay, so the first tip is that this is an energy problem. You want to look at the energy at the top and the energy at the point where it leaves the ball. So up here's your initial, down here's your final. At the top, it has kinetic and potential energy. One of those, hint, hint, might be zero. Down here, it has kinetic and potential energy as well. The second tip is that the potential energy is zero at the center of the ball. So by setting the potential equal to zero down here, then the first height that it starts out from, this h1, is the radius of the ball. And the second height, this one over here, is the final height. And you can use geometry to put h2 in terms of r and theta. I've given you a little bit of an extra bit of a hint here in the sense that this angle is also equal to theta. On most diagrams that you see with this problem, you don't have this second one there. Okay, the third tip is that the normal force and the gravitational force don't behave the way that you're used to them behaving. In a classic, or in a normal problem, no pun intended, the normal force and the gravitational force um, balance out so that the object slides smoothly down a nice flat surface. Okay, in this case though, the normal force is going to get smaller over time as it moves faster and faster. This is because the penny is accelerating. Because of this, the normal force is not equal to the perpendicular component of the gravitational force, which would point this direction. Because it's moving in that perpendicular direction, they together provide the centripetal force. Okay, you need to know what the centripetal force equation looks like, and then you're going to put these two bits together for it. Okay, the fourth tip here is that the normal force goes to zero as the penny leaves the surface. Up here at the top, the normal force is pointing straight up. As it goes down the surface, that force starts to tilt a little bit, um, always staying perpendicular to the surface. And it's going to get smaller and smaller as the uh, penny moves down the surface. Okay, so we saw in the last slide that the normal force and the gravitational force are providing this, or this centripetal force. And because the centripetal force points towards the center of the circle, it's only the gravitational force that's perpendicular to the surface that is going to come into play. So because the normal force at this last moment is equal to zero, we have zero is equal to the gravitational force times the cosine of theta is equal to the centripetal force in the form of mv squared over r. This gives you a way to determine the velocity, which you can now put into that initial energy equation, equation that we had at the beginning. In review, this problem is a classic for a reason. It makes you think about several things related to physics. The first is geometry. Where you put your angles, how you measure your angles, really comes into play with this particular problem. 
You also need to think about potential energy and where you put your zero of potential energy. If you put the potential energy zero anywhere else other than the center of the ball, uh, it is still doable, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, it also makes you think about kinetic energy and speed. The speed is not a given in this problem. You need to figure out the speed in order to determine the kinetic energy as it's leaving the surface of the ball. In order to find that speed, we needed to use some concepts of circular motion. Even though the penny is speeding up as it's going down the, uh, the surface of the ball, it still is moving in a circular path. So knowing that that centripetal force points towards the center of the circle allows us to figure out the speed. Okay, so good luck on this problem and have at it.